Who you are today is a culmination of who you've been. Your thoughts, your memories, poignantly the words you use to describe those memories. We take all of that to today and we look forward and we see what's probable for our lives. God wants to bust that wide open and to help you see what's truly possible for your life. But how do we let him do that? How do we let him in to see what's truly possible for us and create what's possible for us? Not just live our own current life based on what's probable. So many of us have these experiences that have made us who we are. We have certain words that we use to look back and describe these experiences to show us that who we are today because of where we've been. Right? We drive down the road staring at the rear view mirror, not staring out the front windshield. God wants us to live our lives <laughs> looking out the front windshield of our car, not staring at the rear view mirror. But how do we let God in to truly do that and to create what's possible? Today, we're going to talk about that. My name is Jenna Mayo. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, and I'm a professional coach. And I love to ask questions for a living. Oftentimes, I, I joke and say that Jesus was the original coach. Jesus asked 307 questions in the Bible and only answered three of the 183 that he was asked. He only answered three directly. He responded in question, who do you say that I am? <laughs> do you love me? He responded in question. What if we change the way we're asking God our questions? What if we change the way we ask God questions? We're going to change the way we hear God and his answers. God in his infinite wisdom is all consuming. If we believe he's everywhere and he's in everything, then we believe that he's always with us. Yet it's really hard to live like that, isn't it? It's really easy to live busy, chaotic, sports-filled lives with our children running from one work meeting to the next. It's really easy to live rushed. It's really easy to look at social media, media and feel like we're not enough. Yet God wants to be all-consuming everywhere and a part of us. His unconditional love is always there, ready to be and pour into who we are. How do we receive him though? How do we prepare ourselves so that we can have the awareness to receive him? The Holy Spirit's already there. Theoretically, we can absorb it. We can't necessarily tap into it because it's already there, right? But we can always absorb it. We can always bring it in. When I think about bringing in God's unconditional love, I think about the, our five senses and how in the beauty of the Catholic church, they gave us the five senses and five different ways that we can absorb God in every day of our lives in different moments, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. Sight, we can see God. First and foremost, he gave his son Jesus so that we could see him, so that we could see human God, so we could understand he could be like us. We can look on a cross and see God. We can see his son. We can see God in other people. Each of us has a bit of divinity within us, just as there is divine within God. Right? That, that's how we can communicate with God. So when we hug somebody else, we're hugging God. Sight, sound. We can hear God's voice. How do we tune in to hearing the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's that translator. How do we tune in to hearing the Holy Spirit translate to us? We're going to talk about how to create Holy Spirit-led moments in our lives. Before we do, though, let's talk about the other senses. Sight, sound, taste. Communion. God give us the gift of communion. We can taste God. Touch. We can feel God. We can feel him when we hug somebody else. We can feel the Holy Spirit inside of us. Have you ever felt that Holy Spirit moment inside of you? That overwhelming joy, that all-encompassing giddiness? 
that calming peace, that taking a deep breath and relaxing. We can feel God. We can smell nature. Have you ever smelt the first snowfall of the year? Smelt a newborn? We can smell God. We can smell nature all around us. A lot of people find beauty in nature. When we take the time to intentionally absorb God in, through each of our senses, we're going to begin to see God throughout our day in a much deeper, continual way. And we're going to absorb God's love, God's unconditional love. And all of a sudden, all the calamity, the chaos, the news sites, the social media postings, that begins to dissipate because that which we focus on expands. There's tons of psychological theories around that which you focus on expands. Law of attraction, our reticular activation energy, law of comfort, our reticular, reticular activation system, law of confirmation bias. You buy a car, you see it everywhere. You pray for God, you see God. Our minds logically want to bring us what's true and real. And what we want, that which we focus on expands. The more we focus on seeing God throughout our day, the more we're going to see God throughout our day. When we talk about communicating with the Holy Spirit, how do we create Holy Spirit-led moments in our lives? How do we bring the Holy Spirit more into our lives? The Holy Spirit talks to each of us differently. The Holy Spirit speaks to me differently than he speaks to you, than to somebody else. The Holy Spirit speaks to me through when I have an idea that I know is good and pure and from God. And then all of a sudden I have a myriad of reasons why I shouldn't do it. And that moment, I know that the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. In that moment, I know I should invite this friend to mass. In that moment, I know I should pick up the friend to call and just say hi and check in and ask what, what they've been experiencing lately. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I'd encourage you, how does the Holy Spirit speak to you? Pay attention to the trends. Begin your day by saying, God, what do you want me to see today? What do you want me to say in this moment when I'm talking with a friend? There's lots of different ways that you can ask questions. When you ask a question that begins with the word what, it brings our mind to, pro to creativity. What did you do this weekend? I have to think of everything that I did over the weekend and tell you what I did. How was your weekend? Good, fine. You're going to get an automated response. Why did you go to mass this weekend? You're going to get a different response. Psychologically, when you ask a question that begins with the word what, our brain brings creativity. If we ask a question that begins with a how or a why, our brain goes to problem solving. So when we're asking questions of God, what questions are we asking? Are we asking him to problem solve for us? Therefore, we're going to look and see if that's a way that we can actually solve that problem. Or are we going to say, what do you want to create in my life, God? What do you want me to do with this? All of a sudden, our responses from God will change. We're going to hear it differently because we're asking the question differently. The evil one doesn't want us to ask these questions, though. The evil one, the devil, doesn't want us to have a closer communication and closer relationship with God. The two eyes of the devil are isolation and inadequacy, followed closely by indifference. The two eyes of the devil are isolation and inadequacy, followed closely by indifference. When you're going through a hard time, when you're frustrated, when you're overwhelmed, oftentimes you can look back and see, I isolated myself or I felt isolated, or I felt left out. I felt alone. I feel alone, or I'm inadequate. I can't do this. Who am I to do this? Who am I? There's no way I can do this. I can't measure up. Or you're putting inadequacy on somebody else. They really should, they should have stepped up. They didn't. You're making them feel inadequate. Therefore, you're feeling this. You're seeing this world through this lens of inadequacy. Indif followed closely by indifference. I don't need to go to mass on Sunday. It's fine. I'm on vacation. It's fine. I don't need to call that friend. It's fine. My job is terrible and I am unhappy, but I at least know the unhappy and I know how to deal with it. It's fine. I'm just going to stay here. 
Indifference keeps us stuck. The two eyes of the devil are isolation and inadequacy followed closely by indifference, which keeps us stuck. We overcome those by staying in constant communication with God. And in the Catholic church and her ancient wisdom has given us different ways to stay continually in communion with God. One of them is a morning offering. When we think of the morning offering, we think of to consecrate. The word consecrate means to be made holy for a specific reason. Start your day consecrating your day to God. Lord, I give you my day. Whatever happens, let it be a prayer. This way, whenever you're going throughout your day, whether you're praying or not, your life is still a prayer. You could do a more formal morning offering. You could do the one to the sacred heart, the consecration of the sacred heart, that morning offering, offering your day to God. Therefore, no matter what, your life is a prayer. The second one, aspirations, quick breaths. Have you ever thought of a loved one? And you look back and you're just, ah, right. You calm, you relax. Or thought of a sports team winning a game, thought of ex an exciting moment and you're just happy and you're filled with joy or filled with hope. We can have these quick aspirations with God, these exciting moments, these quick breaths, say the word Jesus, say a Hail Mary. Whatever you need to do to have that quick aspiration, therefore, it brings whatever is happening in your life, it brings God to the forefront of your mind. It brings him to the short-term memory, him to the presence. When you do that, you'll begin to see the weight of the world dissipate. Because you're always focusing on the forefront, right? That prefrontal lobe of our brains is Christ, is God, and what he wants to create and what's possible for your life. And you will begin to see your world differently. We can consecrate our day to God, these quick aspirations, these quick breaths, listening to Jesus' music, praying a song, saying Jesus' name, praying the rosary. And the third way is different types of prayer. There are so many different ways you can engage with prayer. You can read a prayer that's already been written, whether it's the Apostles' Creed, whether it's, say, the Our Father, read the Bible, read the Liturgy of the Hours, do the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You can read it, read written or wrote prayer. You can also just talk to Jesus. Jesus, help me throughout the day. Whenever I'm in coaching calls, I'm always praying, God, what do you want me to hear? What do you want me to see? What do you want me to say? When I meet someone and we're talking about faith, I often ask, what does your faith mean to you? If I haven't seen someone in a while, I'll ask, what have you been experiencing lately? I don't ask how they've been, but I ask what you've been experiencing lately. I'm bringing God into their lives. I'm bringing God into the moment. And my life becomes a prayer because I'm connecting with people on such a deeper level than that surface compartmentalized version of ourselves that most of us show up as and are just accustomed to going through our life with. When we bring God into our senses, when we implore all five senses to absorb God into our lives, when we carry him with us throughout the day, we're more able and apt and prepared to fight isolation and inadequacy and indifference. And when we're continually looking forward, driving down that road, staring at that front windshield, not the rear view mirror, we're going to begin to see God working in our, in our lives in a way that we have never seen before. Therefore, he's going to be able to create what's possible for our lives, not what's probable based on what we already know, our limited view, this linear view that we have of our lives. That's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to pay attention, to see how God speaks to you in your life, to see how the Holy Spirit translate, and to invite God into every moment through your five senses, for through sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell, throughout into your daily lives, then you will truly begin to create what's possible for you and with God, not just what's probable based on where you've been and what you know.